Hey everybody, Stitch and Matsu here. Welcome. So I'm working on the uh, block of the of the month. No, week. The mystery Halloween block of the week. Oh my goodness, from Sweet Pea, and um, it's a lot of fun. So I started stitching already, and then I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I bring my friends along? So let's continue. We are working right now on the table. So I wanted my table not to be an ordinary table. I wanted it to be a Halloween table. So I'm doing it in a bright orange. And I see a little thread here. Let me reach around you, get that thread. Go ahead and get started and I'll just fill you in on some stuff. There's Dory, she says hi to everybody. She appreciates her fan club. I think Dory's gonna need to get a YouTube channel. Okay. So if you're brand new here and you're like, what is this all about? This is called machine embroidery and this is so much fun, but I have to warn you, it's addictive. Although there could be worse things to be addicted to, don't you all agree? So if you're brand new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for coming back and I hope you enjoy yourself. So go ahead, stop the video, go grab yourself a nice beverage and a little snack and we're just going to stitch along and chat as though we were all sitting around the embroidery machine and creating this together which we kind of are right so this is a uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with this this is a uh, weekly block that uh, Sweet Pea has come out with it's a mystery block Halloween quilt or you can make it anything you want to make it I suppose um, and um, every Friday, um, not USA, they're in Australia time, they come out with a brand new block. Now I started making this, this is week three, I started making this um, with the 5x5 five five little square and I was like, yeah, that's kind of small. Although there's going to be 12 weeks, so it's, you know, so I thought, you know what, let's go big. Let's go big. Let's do the seven by seven. So that's the size I'm doing. And I'll tell you, um, the seven by seven, you really can see the details because I did the five by five and you missed that video, go back and watch it. Um, I have it in the machine embroidery playlist. And um, when you stitch out the larger size, you really can see all the fine details, a lot of details that I missed. So definitely check it out. If you're brand new to machine embroidery, well, sit back. Let me know if this is something that kind of piques your interest. I found this through another YouTube channel oh, a few years ago. And I always loved the thought of embroidery. Of course, I did embroidery years ago. I did the plastic canvas, the cross stitch, the stamped cross stitch, um, little embroidery. I did the, who remembers the candle wick knots? Okay, this is another part of the table and I have my laptop open here. I have a specific laptop that I use um, just for my machine embroidery. So I download everything and use that. And so rather than printing it all off and killing 5,000 trees, I, um, let me see, how's this gonna look with it? You kinda want something a little bit off from what, this is gonna stitch the side of the table, like the underneath kind of part of it which it kind of should be darker, but eh, you do what you want to do. That's the fun thing about machine embroidery. So I started years ago and um, trying to get this in here. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? You wouldn't think that a camera in the way would create such havoc. What am I doing here? <laughs> you would think that I was a beginner. My goodness. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, it's a very long, where is the end of it? My goodness, where am I pulling it from? Look at this big hunk of chunk of thread that was wrapped around, I don't know where. Um, so where was it? Oh, I started off machine embroidery a few years ago. Um, it always piqued my interest, but I was saying, who remembers the old candle wick? And I see a thread. You know, you see a thread and you just, it's kind of like, you just got to get it. So let me just get that. And I remember doing a pillowcase with um, 
candle wicking, which is those little, I think they're called French knots. Gosh, I don't even remember it so long ago. I was really young and I, it was with a lot of muslin and it was real pretty. I don't remember what it looked like, but I can remember the muslin and I remember it. And well, that's that for that. So um, I was just kind of looking and I'm like, oh, I hope that goes over it again. It's not really too good. <laughs> The sweet pea would not let us down. I'm telling you, their designs are fabulous. Um, I just was awarded a, a bonus coupon. So when you buy designs from them, you can save up points. And the points you can then turn in to get a 20% discount. Now, if you like sweet pea, you can use a referral code where I would get a little bit of recognition for the referrals and I get extra points and you get extra points and we're all point happy, right? So um, so this is a lot of fun and I'm always up for a challenge. Although everyone's been posting and you know what I mean. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's Monday night. It's a hiring day at work. Uh, you all know what I'm talking about with the Juju Christmas tree uh, skirt. How many of you have seen that? Raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't think I could take that on. That just looks so intense, but oh my gosh, I'm seeing the designs and everyone is uh, doing an absolute stunning job on theirs. I'm just looking to see what is the next step. Ooh, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, embroider the wine glass. You would think I was drinking. I just tipped it all over. And the wine slash blood. Ooh. Let me zoom in to see what they used. Um, side of the tail. Embroider the wine glass and wine slash blood. It looks like they used white. Um trying to think what would be a good color that you would see it on oh, mine. I don't think white would be a good color. I'm thinking black. What are y'all thinking? Maybe a dark brown? Would a dark brown show up? Dark brown? Let's go with a dark brown. I'm thinking this will show up. So anyway, hail, hail. The gang's all here. Comes my dog too. She's probably like, uh, who are you talking to? I'm talking to all my hundreds of friends out there in YouTube land, Aurora. And they've all come here to see what Stitching with Sue is doing tonight. Okay, so let's try the wine glass. You know, worst case scenario, you could always stitch over it. I started doing that with the table. I started doing my table in brown, thinking, well, you know, it's a table, got to do brown. And I'm like, no, no, I really don't have to do brown. Um, let's do bright orange, because why not? This is a Halloween quilt, right? And this is going to be fabulous when it's put together. Now, if you do make the smaller size, oh, I think the brown was a good choice. Black probably would have worked as well, but it, it was close to that color. Okay, so next, I'm assuming um, it's going to be the wine, which is going to be blood in my case. So I'm going to need some red. And if I had more King Star Metallic, I would definitely be using red inside my glass, but I do not. And I think I'm going to go with this. Hmm, maybe not. I put it under the light and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing it there. All right, let me see. Uh, somebody made a comment in one of my other videos. They said they love how I wing it. Oh, I see a red here. I see a, um, I'm going to live on the edge red. What do y'all think? You think I'll have enough? Let's see. <laughs> it's only a minute, so I think I'll have enough. Um, yeah, so she commented she loves how I live on the edge. Well, you know, sometimes the best things come out when they're not planned. How many of you can relate to that? And I don't know. I'm just feeling kind of silly tonight. So if it's a little annoying, I apologize. But it's Monday night. It is uh, August 29th, 2022, and you are here stitching with Sue, and we are making this fun Halloween. Oh, yes. I think I had enough. Yes, I did. Okay, so next, um, it's going to be a bottle and shine. That's weird, isn't it? Bottle and shine. Kind of sounds like something you would 
buy at a store, a specialty store. All right, now I know wine bottles are kind of like a green color, maybe? Like a deep kind of green? I'll tell you, I need to get some things on my spools. Um, let's go with that. Some things on my spools because all my threads are all tied up together. They're all unraveling because I've been using a lot of different colors on all the different things I've been doing. And um, my colors are all getting mishmashed. So this is gonna be a wine bottle and then there's going to be, um, uh, I guess like a white, you could use a white, maybe a little bit off white, a little shine. It's a cute color, kind of like a light gray color. Can you see that? What do you think of the polka dot backgrounds? I did some skeletons on the one background, which a lot of this is, you're not gonna see anyhow. Um, and then a polka dot, like that's the walls, polka dots. It's kind of crazy, don't you think? But why not? Why not? So let me get in a drink, and I'm only drinking um, ice water. So, oh, what's all been happening? Eh, not too much. I got, uh, let's see, over the weekend, what happened over the weekend? Did anything happen? Well, I did my stitch out. I was doing Halloween towels Friday night with you all. Um, Saturday, I was working on some of my stamping projects. I have an upcoming Zoom that I'm doing this Thursday live with uh, my stamping people. And uh, I was getting a project prepared for that. And um, Sunday, I was working on that also, cleaning up my room a little bit, my goodness. You know, you see all these people that post pictures of their craft room and everything is sparkling and totally amazing and everything in order. Yeah, that's not real life, folks. Real life is having 5,000 threads on your floor, backings from your dimensionals, uh, pieces of um, card stock all over, glue stuck on your table. You know where I, wh what I mean. You know what I mean. I like the green bottle. And I'm gonna use this, it's kind of, um, not really white, it's a little tint of gray, and that's gonna do just a little um, shadow, or they called it shine. Bottle and shine. The little glare, you know, on the bottle. Speaking of which, I've had a bottle of open Red Cat in my fridge since Easter. Any of you know the Hazlitt Wine Red Cat? Now, I am not a wine connoisseur, but I do like Hazlitt Wines. They're up in uh, New York. Oh yeah, that looks good. They're up in New York. And um, it's probably gonna turn into vinegar by the time I finish. Now, the next thing they're calling for is black, but let me see what is going to be what the color they're, they're using is black. Uh, bottle and shine. Embroider the cockroach behind the picture. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't, well, I don't even want to say that I've never seen a cockroach because I never have. I've seen pictures. I've never seen one real. I don't want to see one real. I kind of am like, well, I'm not really a clean freak, but I don't live messy, messy that I would have a cockroach behind my picture frame, but... In the world of embroidery, who knows what we're going to have. And this is going to be really, really fun because there is a, oh, that was a small cockroach. Okay, what's the rest? The hanging wire. Hanging wire. Is that a hanging wire? Embroider the cockroach and then the hanging wire. Okay. Well, you can't really even see that cockroach. You know what? I think I'm going to, um... I'm going to uh, go back and I'm going to stitch that again. I've been having an issue when I'm using the black thread and maybe it's the thread now, it should be the thread, but that the white bobbin is showing through and I, I've had a couple people respond um, what they think I should do. Yeah, I'm still not seeing that cockroach. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing. All right, let's just move onward. 
Um, so yeah, a few of you have responded. And somebody said about a new bobbin case. Um, I don't know about that, but I think I'm going to go back with the brown. Because I think the brown kind of shows up pretty well. Hanging wire. I guess it could be brown. But I was going to tell you that there's a, um, on this square, there's a little picture frame. See this little uh, rectangle here? And uh, I'm going to use a piece of fabric that has like a, a face on it. So that may take a little bit of work to get it just right in the frame. But we can do it. process with the picture using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place of one. Okay. So next is going to be the picture. because now it's calling for black and now it's looking like a hanger wire. Did I miss something here? Water shack. The cockroach behind the picture and then the hanging wire. I don't know. I'm just going to go on. I'm going to keep this brown in here. I don't know. It just looks like a little blurb to me. Oh, maybe the body was one color and the legs another. What do y'all think of that? You think that was the case? I don't know. You see? See the white thread is coming through? Hmm. I'm going to change, um, change thread. And, um, I don't know. Maybe it's the bobbin. Maybe it's the bobbin. So, I did go on to the Brother website. Oh, I got to move you guys. Hold on. The frame, the embroidery frame is too large. I did go on to the brother website and um, I don't know it's not an old bobbin it's fairly new but I'm going to change the bobbin and they did say something about the bobbin um, they said about the thread on top make sure that that's you know good bobbins here. I buy the pre-wound bobbins. I get them off of Amazon. And uh, I just cleaned out underneath here in a little while ago. And I was having some other problems. So I don't really think it's that. All right. Let me get my frame back in here. Let me take a closer look at that cockroach. Yeah. All right. Whatever. It is what it is. Okay. I may have to move you guys. Just a teensy, teensy bit. Okay. All right, so where were we? Oh, the outline of the picture. I am going to do white. White. So it says uh, the applique process. Okay, so I'm going to applique. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's the only thing with these um, designs like this is there's a lot of thread changes. Let me fix you all. There you are. So here is the picture frame. And I have this guy. But that would kind of only show his little face. I don't think I'd be able to get the pumpkin in there too. It's kind of hard to see space. Like if I got his head in there. So that might not work. Um, but then I have this fabric with little heads on. And I'm thinking this little guy or maybe one of these. Isn't that witch? How about that little guy? Look at that skeleton. He has he has his arms up in the air. Or here's a little boo. We put boo on the wall. Picture. I like this little guy. I think he's kind of cute. So what I want to do, I'm going to kind of pinch my fabric. I'm going to kind of fold it and pinch it. That other guy's head's much bigger, but so like here is the center. It's hard to see because I use black thread. 
Well, you know what? Let's, uh, um, 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 okay, there and there. I'm going to have to try this again. I know you're probably all saying, well, why don't you just do it this way? I wish I could hear you all. I've done this before, you know, on different design. And I probably should get rid of some of this fabric, but I don't want to remove too much of it. Let me just remove some of it. So let me see if I fold it this way. Okay, that way. And again, here's the frame. And if I put his head like there, maybe move him down a teensy bit. I'm just going to go for it. And if I don't like it, did I unthread that? Yes, I did. If I don't like it, I can just, uh, I probably could have cut it out and um, used some fusible kind of stuff. But if I don't like it, I'll just take the stitches out and do it again. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Oh. Yeah, not too shabby. Okay, uh, okay, cut around it. Okay, trim around it, and then we're gonna do satin stitch around. Okay, let me slide it out a little teensy bit. Trim around. Okay. Okay. This side is going to be the tricky one. Okay. Extra there. Let me stand up to do this. I know, kind of awkward. And that fancy schmancy that I have, you know, three cameras set up here. I'm a one woman show with one camera, which is my phone. Yeah, that looks good. What do you guys think? I think that looks good, 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 good. Okay, now, um, I think I'm gonna do black for the picture. For, I can do purple, I can do purple. No, that's too much purple. Um, how about that bright green? I could do that fluorescent green. Yeah, let's do that glow in the dark fluorescent green. Oh yes, 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 yes. What do you think? I think so. Okay. It's like the whole spool is like glowing on the machine here. Because it's dark outside. You know, it's nighttime. And um, it's kind of glowing. Let me put my tube back in. Um, thread. Um, needle. Thread the needle. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what we think. Okay, so it's going to do the outline of the picture frame. I know there was a piece of fabric here. I, I blew it away. <laughs> okay. All right, now it's going to do the satin stitch around. Oh, I'm very happy with that. I think it turned out good. It looks like old Frankie's hanging on the wall saying, Howdy. Howdy, folks. Uh, I think I need to trim that a little bit more. Mm. Maybe not. There we go. Uh, this is going to be three minutes. Let's see what's next. Okay, next. Um, oh, it's going to do another applique of the side of the coffin. Okay, so it's going to be like the side of the coffin. All right, so let me go through my fabric pieces. Hey, maybe I can use this guy like on top of, let me see where you are, on top of the coffin. So it looks like a bone guy is inside. Right. Let's see. Let's make it a fun coffin, right? Like a party on the inside. using all these bits and scraps of what I have, um, you know, in my Halloween bin. So I just wanted to, how do you all organize your fabric? 
Oh my goodness, I have like so much fabric. I need a way to organize it, and I'm not really sure how to do it. So let me know. Let me know in the comments. How do you organize your fabric? Or do you not? Or you're like me. I have these bins, these collapsible little bins I had bought off Amazon that they're, they kind of like the cube bins. They're just like fabric collapsible. And I just have them kind of separated, but they're like thrown in the closet. So when you need something, you gotta go through them. There go all the bins. I mean, I don't know a way to, unless I have my son come and put shelves in or something, I don't know. I hate to put something permanent. I don't know how long I'm gonna be living in this house, you know, because I'm thinking once I get old, I'm not gonna be able to be do the steps. <laughs> if I ever get to retire, that would be wonderful. But um, I don't know about that either. So, organization is a big thing. Oh, well, I know, I'm looking at this fabric here with this ghost. I wonder if there's a way I can have it so that the ghost and there's not much fabric that's shown, like a ghost would be peeking out from behind the coffin. That would be fun. Okay. Oh yeah, I like that green. Do you like the green? I like my orange table, my wine bottle, and my blood red wine. <laughs> okay. See, the thread doesn't show through on that. It's just the black. Maybe it's a black thread. Okay, so now we're going to do the outline. Okay, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use white so I can see. So now this will glow in the dark around here. It's really fun. I got the I got the thread. I know many of you're going to ask where did you thread from? The thread's from Amazon and it's bro thread, and it came in a pack with a whole bunch of colors, glow in the dark. And I think that's where it works best when you have like a real thick outline like that. Cause I've used it on other parts of this quilt and I didn't really show um, that it really showed off a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Now this is a 46 minute stitch. It had 9,404 stitches, but you know, it don't seem that long, but the, the whole outline going around like, I mean, you can't see when it comes over. This whole outline that goes around, that was 12 minutes. Okay, so now, um, what do you think? I feel like I'm gonna sneeze of this going around. I'm gonna sneeze. Achoo! Excuse me. I don't know, I'm yawning, I'm <laughs> sneezing. It's like a hot mess here tonight. All right, let's see. I want to cover that. I could use vinyl, of course. Could use vinyl. But I don't know. I'm kind of like with liking the Halloween fabric idea. Oh, this is going to be living on the edge here. I'm not sure if that's going to cover. But let's just take a look, see, and see, see what happens. Not good, folks. Not good. Sorry if I yelled that loud. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't do that. Okay. So, see, living on the edge is not always a good thing. Just going to cut this away because I'm going to end up um, using something else. Living on the edge. Oh, dear. Hard to see with the camera in the way and wouldn't you know it it was like right where that slice in the fabric was let me cut this out okay throw that on the floor for george okay the needle is raised there we go okay let me slide this out all right don't do what i just did don't use a scrap of fabric that has a cut in it that you think you might be able to do because that did not work. All right, I think I got to take the hoop out. All right, so I can see. I cannot see. Let 
I just want to cut this away. Let me move the hoop totally out so I can bring it on over here. Take it out and we will stitch this again with something else. Okay. Let me pull out some of those threads. All right, well that didn't work as pl like I planned it. Put it all back. I had to plug my phone in because um, it was low, going low. I'm gonna leave it out a little bit. Let me see. Okay, all right, that didn't work. Uh, so we go to plan B, which is, uh, I don't know. I need a piece of fabric that's gonna be big enough. But what color? I do that little guy in there. Let's bring in some orange. Okay, so no worries there. We're just going to go back. He's not bringing needles down the needle there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to look to see because I move. Okay, so I want to be right there. Okay, there we go. So we're going to start over again. Keep our fingers crossed. I think I moved this again. Oh my gosh. Was that like on the edge there or what? Were you guys saying, oh no, she's done it again? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm like sweating. I'm sweating. And my iPad died. Okay, embroider the satin stitch along the side of the coffin. Okay, well, I gotta trim this. Oh, I see what's happening. The cord is caught on. I thought the camera was moving and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm having like some kind of attack. Okay. I promise you, this is not as difficult as I am making it. And I'm thinking I want to do orange or black. That's a nice piece of scrap. I'm just going to put it back in the Halloween scrap pile. Sometimes you only need a little bit. So, if you haven't figured this out yet, I have not made one of these yet. So, I am making it kind of live, but not live. You know, because usually I make something first and then I do a video making it. So, I've already done a run through, but this time that ain't happening. Here, let me fix my thread. Okay, so this is going to do a satin stitch around. So, it's three minutes. Then I think we're going to do the top of the coffin. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to do that ghosty skeleton guy. Skeleton guy would be fun. This is fun fabric. I think this fabric um, glows in the dark. You know, it's so weird that I'm even doing this because I'm not even a Halloween person. I mean, yeah, when my kids were little, we did the whole Halloween thing. We just cut the piece of fabric. But um, as far as like, you know, decorating my house crazy, I don't really do that for Halloween. I, I like to decorate for what can work in the fall. Because then I can leave it up to Thanksgiving. So like pumpkins and leaves and all that sorts of things. Not necessarily, you know, spooks and ghosts. Now this fabric is fabulous. 
if only this scrap was a little bigger the back wouldn't that be fun i don't know i'll have to see maybe it will if it does you know if it does it does if it doesn't i'm thinking maybe i didn't cut that fabric big enough i think that coffin is bigger than i was planning all right we'll see okay i like the orange i was afraid to use black again because like i said i mean the black just keeps creeping through i can use a different black these one in here. So yeah, this is cute. I don't know if you guys want to hang out to the end. Um, I only have another, about another 5,000 stitches. Oh, we're almost there. Line of the coffin. I don't really think you're going to see it. Okay. I can use black vinyl. So many options. Maybe I'll just have to stitch another one. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'd be able to see that. That's good. Okay. Let's see what we have to work with. Pull it out a little bit. Okay, so I have this skeleton guy. Again, this is another one of those. I think this glows in the dark, so that would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a, a little kid. You know how kids like to do coloring books and everything? Well, this is kind of like coloring book, but with fabric. All right, let's see how this guy, if this guy's going to fit in the coffin. Uh, I think he has to go that way. Maybe it's a little too high. And I think I'm going to change the white thread. I can see if I like it. Oops, that was my hand. That time. Oh my gosh, where does the white thread start? I don't know, I thought I had like so much light in here. I feel like maybe I don't. Like I feel like I'm in the dark. Because Bobby, when I told you all about my cataracts, I'm kind of thinking like that might be a lot of what my problems are. All right, uh, is that going to stitch right there? No, it's going to move over. Oh, what? Attach oh, it would help Sue if you would put the embroidery frame in. All right, let's see. If not, well, I'll be taking out stitches. I'm gonna have part of the moon in there. Well, it's kind of off to the side. But, you know, I think that may be a okay. Uh, in front of the coffin and 
trim. Embroider the slime. Oh, there's slime. All right, let me trim this. There's slime. Slime. Maybe I could do it as blood instead. Slime. Slime. So my friend stopped over, and Kathy, if you're watching, hello. I know that you watch my videos. She was lucky enough to take a trip up to Pocono so and back, and I'm so jelly. Although she did ask me if I wanted to come. I just thought it would be dangerous if I did. And her husband would probably like divorce her if he had to listen to us cackling an hour up and an hour back. Okay, so the slime, slime coming out of the coffin. Well, I think I definitely have to use, um, did I pull that thread out? Definitely have to use, maybe I'm, I'm gonna do blood. I'm gonna do blood. Um, yeah, I just figured he he probably would divorce her if he had to listen to the two of us in the car. Though, you know, it was a nice gesture, and Kathy, I appreciate that. And, um, oh, I just wanna tell you, she is a proud owner of a brand new sewing machine. And I am not an influencer whatsoever, so get that out of your head. I had nothing to do with it. She happened to stop by to pick up something stamping related and uh, had nothing to do with it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So she's going to have some happy stitch. With her quilting. Okay, now we're going to do the outline. And well, I think I'm going to be doing black. Although maybe I will, because this is going to be pretty predominant, you know, do I have another black? I'm going to try a different black thread instead of the one I've been using. What I was using is, I forget what the name of that one is, but I think this one is a bro thread. I'm going to use this. I could use black in the bobbin as well if I really, really want to. Mm, do I want to? I think I do. I think I do. You guys just have to put up with all of this. I'm going to change the bobbin and put a black bobbin in. And you all know when you put the bobbins in, brother machines, it's like the letter P. So this is the round circle. And the thread going down is, and it's not focusing, is the, the line going down on the P. I lost my thread. So that's how they go in for a brother machine. And that's an easy thing to do, just change the bobbin. Only because I want the black to be, you know, nice. Not that I don't, what is this? Let me trim that. Not that the rest of it is not nice by any means. It's all nice, but you know what I mean. So yeah, nothing else really exciting. Oh, I did get my grass cut. Um, last night. I kind of waited until, you know, it kind of cooled down a little bit. And um, my daughter for my birthday, and I know you're gonna, you're all gonna laugh, but I'm gonna tell you. She asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I said, you know, I could use a new hose. So the hose I had before, I don't know, I may have told you this, and if I did, stop me. Oh, it looks like his foot's bleeding. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, I may have told you this before, but when I was cutting the grass the one time, I ran over the, um, the hose with the lawnmower. Yeah, that wasn't a good thing. And uh, so, so I said, you know, I want one that's able to reach to the front of the house, but you know, when, when you're a woman and you have to drag a hose to the front of the house, the old fashioned regular hoses, my goodness, you know, um, they're painful, you know? <laughs> so I, um, I told her about one I saw where it kind of like collapses and expands, so she got it. Oh my goodness, can I tell you what a game changer that is? She got it from Amazon, it even came with a little holder. Um, she had bought a hose reel holder, but here she said, oh yeah, it came with this thing. And she didn't think, you know, it was that decorative. Well, the thing just hooks right over the water spout outside. 
and it was like, okay, installation, boom, put it over the, the spigot. And it expands to this big long thing. And then when you empty the water out of it, it contracts down to this little thing. But the first time that uh, her husband w was out there, cause he thought he was gonna have to install this thing on the house, you know, to hang the hose. Well, you know, it really is like weights. It weighs like nothing. And when you go to fill it up, it expands and it's black. And it kind of looks like it's swirling like a, a snake in the grass, but it's like filling with water, so it's expanding. And then when you're done, it contracts back down to like nothing. So to, to pull that out, I went out to the whole front of the house and hosed down the side of the house, the front of the house. Next time I'm gonna go around the other side. So I don't think I really have ever done that side. But, oh my gosh, it was so easy and wonderful to use. And I see a thread or something. Um, it was fabulous. Fabuloso. Okay. But, um, anyhow, it's a great thing. And, you know, I wasn't, like, wiped out from doing it. And, uh, yeah. So, definitely check it out. It's like an expandable hose. If you've ever seen it. I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen it. Okay, so next is going to be, oh, there's books. Look at the books. Oh, the books are on the floor next to the casket. Like, who doesn't keep their books on the floor next to a casket? Tell me. Tell me. So it looks like there's just, I think that's all the applique for now. It's just a matter of changing thread and doing all the final touches. But it actually looks like his foot is bleeding. That's too funny. Like he got a boo-boo foot. <laughs> boo -boo. Oh, so I wanted to tell you all, um, there may be something new coming up down the pipe as far as my channel. I was approached by YouTube and asked if I would like to participate in a, um, uh, a membership where um, viewers can join the membership and you get different perks for being a member of my channel. So there's a fee for that. And of course, you know, I'll continue to do videos that are absolutely free like this. But um, it would be a special group that, you know, you would only have, only that group would have access to certain videos and certain things and you get different perks for being a member of the Stitch and Wit Sue membership. So I did put the application in and I'm just waiting to hear back from them. So let me know, is that something you guys think you'd want to do? I mean, I think I'm going to go for it and give it a try because I think there's a lot more we can do, you know, as a group together. So um, let me know what you think about that. And I know the other day somebody somebody left like three comments, so they must have been watching the video and they must have, you know, I must have said, oh, about this question, so they left the message, a comment, and then they left a, sec a second comment, and then they left the third comment, so I thought that was funny. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate your comments, you know, there, there's such a, a wonderful viewing audience out there for my channel and this has just been growing with leaps and bounds and I'm just so excited about that. Um, I'm excited because I love sharing this with you all and I also um, I love the fact that you know so many of you I'm helping and I don't really feel as though you know I'm really doing anything special um, but I know how appreciative you all are about everything I'm doing, and um, it's wonderful. Oh, there's going to be another. Okay. Okay, well, his arm might be in the way. <laughs> there's another um, thing that goes. Well, maybe that'll cover over that. Maybe it's a good thing I changed the bobbin. So maybe that'll be all right. It'll just be, like, hidden. But you always use, like, a permanent marker and color in this white part that's kind of showy. I guess it's supposed to be like the top of the coffin, but I have a guy in there. So I can, we'll, we'll take probably a black Sharpie marker and just color that in, or maybe gray. Maybe gray. Yeah, I forgot that there was the inside. So there looks 
so there's going to be books. Well, I think the books and then we're done, folks. Yeah, the books and then we're done. Alright, that wasn't too bad. But, so this is fun. It's so much more fun when you're all here. I really do appreciate you all coming here and stitching along with me. I'm just kind of sitting around the embroidery machine and just chit-chatting about, you know, how your day was or actually how my day was. But feel free to leave a comment. Oh, and don't forget, I have a Facebook group and that too has been growing. And um, you're able to post what you're making on there. We'd love to see it. And one suggestion I would make is if you're gonna post, you know, a design or something, please be sure to, to let us know where you got it from because, you know, somebody may like that design and they would, you know, if they're anything, you know, like me, I see something, I'm like, oh yeah, I want that. I have to, I have to stitch that. I mean, I know a lot of people say that I do that to them, but um, if you find something good or maybe you find a free design that there was a free download, I'm oh, sorry, um, be sure to let us know. We'd love to know. Actually, that little out, that little part there. Well, maybe the elbow thing. It could look like the background, you know, like there's a star in the background. It could. Be. We'll see. When it says metal color, metal for that book. But we'll see what we got here. What colors do I want? Metal, 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 metal. They say. Mm, oh, I could do king, king star metallic. Oh, maybe. Let's do that. King Store Metallic Thread. I'll tell you, you use the rest. Now, do the best. The King Star Metallic rocks. There is no issues with it whatsoever. <laughs> Watch me say that and then, oops, there's a good issue. Okay, so let's do this book with, maybe we could do uh, silver on one and gold on another. What do you think? These are like fancy books. I don't know if you're going to see it. Huh. Maybe you're not going to see it. Because of the white. Eh, maybe it will. Maybe it will all blend in. Yeah, you kind of could. I don't know if you'd be able to make out what it is. short-lived. That wasn't very exciting. <laughs> Let me trim that. Pull that out. Next is black. It's going to do like the outlines on that. And never pull your thread back through. Sometimes I make the mistake and I do it. I know. I hear you. But um, always cut it at the top and pull it through the needle like as though you were, you know, threading it. Never pull backwards, because that can goof up your tension in your machine. And we don't want to have problems with our tension. All right, let's see. Let's see what it does for that. Because I might use gold then for the other book. That kind of looks like two books on my um, embroidery machine screen. Maybe it is just two books. And see, it just does the outline, so it looks like a book. I think I'm going to do the other one in gold. Maybe fancy books. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Maybe 
think it's that black thread, because now that I switched to this thread, although I do have still have a black bobbin in. But I don't know. Am I not gonna use that thread no more? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, you can't really see that book too well. We'll put a gold one on top of it, and it'll be fab. When they call for the color russet but we're gonna do gold so we will have a silver book and a gold book because this skeleton is flashy and he likes a good book he's bougie bougie is that the word they use bougie <laughs> he's a bougie guy you can't really see that second one because it blends in with my fabric, but that's okay. I'm not sure if I like this block, but it'll all blend in with the, all the other blocks. So you really can't, you know, make a decision as to whether you like a block or not because of the fact um, once they all go together, then that makes the difference. Ooh, look at that gold. That is fancy. That definitely stands out. I should have put gold around the coffin. But King Star metallic thread is the best. I've bought those other brands, I know, and you all know what I'm talking about where it breaks the needle, the thread breaks. It's just, you know, this might cost a little bit more, but look at the quality of it. I mean, sometimes you know, cheapest isn't the bestest. We all know that. Okay, this is the last step, folks, and then we're done. So I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Be sure to hit the like button, comment, share. If you know somebody who would be interested in, in seeing machine embroidery videos, let them know that we're there. Come on over to my uh, Stitching with Sue Facebook group and uh, leave your comments. Um, as you join the group, we'll send out a big welcome, and everyone's very welcoming. They'll say, hey, welcome here. Um, let us know what you're working on. Post pictures of it if you like, and let us know where you got the design from, because, you know, we all have to go and get it then. Okay, that's it. Dory's back. Say hi, Dory. Yeah, that little meow. Okay, that's it. Finished sewing. Yay! I know, I'm just taking this out. Okay, you can move the carriage. Okay, so let's move. Watch out, Dory. Don't roll you over. I'm in a wheelie chair here. All right, let's move this and let's take a look at our work. A um, few little threads here and there. Snip. A few here and there. A little snip. I could clean that all up. Another one down here. Um, but yeah, there's another one there. Okay, well, I'll clean that up later. Let me pop it out of the machine. I mean, out of the hoop. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so now this will all fold over. Here is the edge of it. Okay, so that's the edge. So that's what you're going to see, like little um, heads and parts of skeletons. There's the edge. But um, here's the whole design. I get a good close up. Let's see at the top. There's a little spider web in the corner and a thread. And then go over here to our little Frankie saying hi de ho, folks. And then we have poor Mr. Bones. And like I said, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to color that in so you won't see him. And of course, he got blood coming from the inside of the coffin. We got those fancy little books, silver and gold. Look how fab they are. And then over here is our claw foot table with a little spider web and our glass of blood with a fun little wine bottle. And oh, let's not forget the cockroach that just kind of looks like a blob. If you're asking me, it looks like a blob, but whatever. You can't really see it. So there it is. There is our fun block number three from the Sweet Pea 
mystery, Halloween mystery quilt blocks. So if you have not yet started these, go ahead and uh, come on over and join the Facebook group and see what everybody's stitching. That will definitely get you encouraged to come and try. Oh, and the other thing I want to do, I'm going to put this under the light. I wonder if it'll work under that one or if I have to put it under this one. I'm going to put this under the light. I'm going to stop my um, machine from embroidery because I think I'm done for the night. I'm going to turn this off and I want to see if this is going to glow. Hold on. Let me move my lights. Let's see. This is going to glow. Hold on. Let me turn off the lights. Ooh, can you see it? <gasps> look! <laughs> oh, look at it, it's glowing. Can you see it? The fabric is glowing and the picture frame is glowing. Oh my gosh, is that not fun or what? Super fun. Let me put my light back on. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too fun, isn't it? I love it. All right. So, uh, let me know what you think. Like I said, be sure to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Like, comment, share, and um, till next time, have a boorific day and happy stitching. We'll see you later. Bye for now.